Hey, it's the end of the session. I'm here with my buddy Chelsea, and this is Chelsea's Roadmap to Success. Uh, now, uh, the primary issue here is the loose leash walking. So uh, I'm gonna, th there's a video above uh, that really talks about all the individual elements, but I was a little bit sloppy at the end on kind of the instructions, so I'm gonna go through this here. Your first step is to make sure that you're exercising her first. The leash biting was probably because she's overly tired here, but she could also do that if she's uh, got too much energy because she's frustrated, she wants to run. So I would do a little game of fetch, um, the doggy stairmaster on the uh, on the stairs. Play tug of war for uh, you know whatever amount she needs. Don't overdo it. Don't underdo it. You want to find that Goldilocks amount. And once you found that, then she has ten minutes to recover. Then you should try practicing the exercises we're talking about. The first one we went over uh, was the leash pressure game, and that's basically just teaching her that pulling on a leash is not something she should do because when she feels that pressure, she's if she I come to my human, I get a reward. Now, one of the, when I was practicing with one of the guardians, one of the guardians specifically was wrapping a leash around her hand uh, to keep it really short. And that's a natural thing that we get in a habit of doing, but we shouldn't do that. The shorter the leash is, typically the more pulling your dog's gonna provide, and also the more corrections we're gonna do. The more that we correct or pull, the more you're training your dog to pull, to pull against you. So you wanna avoid doing that. That's why we wanna practice in the outdoor environment. And if the outdoor environment is too stimulus rich, practice inside. There's nothing wrong with that. Always go back to an easier level anytime your dog struggles and help them practice and the behavior and the mechanics of the exercise until they're proficient. Then gradually try to move to a more advanced situation. Uh, going from jumping too big a step too quickly is a very common mistake, probably one of the most common mistakes people make. All right, so the first one is we're going to have that leash pressure game. We're going to have it at the end of the leash and we're going to basically just pull very gently, not a, not a, pull, not pulling her towards us. We just want to add a little bit of pressure. So there's a difference between adding pressure and pulling the dog towards you. So as soon as she gives into that pressure, meaning she starts to take a step towards us, we're going to say yes and then hold the treat out here. We want her to come to us. One of the guardians was, as soon as the pressure happened, she walked to the dog and gave the treat, which we don't want to do. We want to condition Chelsea to come towards us. So at first we're going to do that, and then when she comes back, then we're to maybe take a step this way, and then take a step that way. So we're walking backwards, but we're facing her for the most part. After a while, when she, we, we don't even have to do that. We just hold, we just, uh, what you should see is you don't have to pull on the leash. As soon as you start doing the exercise, she just starts coming towards you. Once you've achieved that level, then when she starts coming towards you, then take one step backward before you say yes and give her a treat, or two steps, and work up to three steps, keep on working up till you get to be about five steps. Once you get about five, or you're taking five steps backwards, and be careful you don't trip on anything, then what you wanna do is, is take a couple steps backwards, she's coming towards you, and then turn, so she's kind of walking with you. And sometimes you might have to hold a treat out here, but at this point, she should be just kind of following you around because you're the giver of treats, which is what we like. And then eventually, now you're walking with her kind of next to you. At this stage, this is when you can start practicing the position orientation exercise I showed you. That's the one where you're gonna draw your arm and your leg back at the same time. Now when I do this, and now you guys went on the left side. So I'm gonna keep my leash in my right hand, the treat's here, and if you watch my leg and my arm, they're gonna go back simultaneously. A lot of people go like this, or they go like this, and they make them pull multiple steps. It's just your arm and leg, and as I go down, I usually go down as I'm going back, so I'll show you again. And then once that goes here, turn her towards you and then turn your wrist so the, tr the treat is here and then she's now on the heel position. Make sure your heel hand is behind the seam. Um, and then turn to face her again and do it this way. And you're gonna do it back and forth until it's very easy and she's lowering herself into the position and she's almost doing it right away. Um, so you wanna keep on practicing this. And again, keep this practice sessions two, three minutes maximum and make sure the last repetition is a good one. So now we're doing this leash pressure thing, and when you get to the point where you can lure her, uh, or not the leash pressure, the, the positioning game, once you get her in the orientation or positioning game, whatever you want to call it, into that, so then you lure her back easily, then you take one step forward, and you're holding the treat in your hand here, and you're taking one step, and then releasing the treat. And then right away, you can grab another treat and take a second step. You don't have to, when we do the face-to-face -face thing, we're just doing that to get a lot of reps. Eventually, now we, that she understands it, now we want to start using this to move forward. So we get her into the position, she's in the position, we take a step forward and then release the treat, grab another one, put my hand, put my hand down there right away. Now she loses interest very quickly. So your timing is good. As soon as you give her that treat, you got boom. So you'd, I would probably have the treat pouch here and ready to go, boom, ready to go. And when I do this, I usually like to have a leash around my arm and you can get some leashes that go around your wrist, or around your waist, but the idea is we wanna make, uh, and you can even do it here where you're holding the leash and have the treats in this hand, but you wanna get those treats in this hand right away. So eventually you're gonna do two steps before we release that treat, three steps before we release the treat, and she's walking next to us. Um, 
Eventually, when you get up to about five or six steps, then you try to incorporate some turns. So you're walking this way, and she's one, two, three, four, five, and let's say this is the wall, then I turn, do a U-turn, I'm going there, and I take one step, and then I release the treat. Then I do the U-turn, eventually take two steps before I release the treat, three steps. So we're just getting your orientating, and go in different directions in your yard, you have a lot of variety in it, but anytime she has difficulty, go back to an easier level or an easier orientation that she was at, and practice that until get a couple successes. And the dog has difficulty going from one transition to the next, Often what I'll do is I'll start off with the easier one and I'll lead directly in it. So I'll do five or six one steps and then I go to two steps and then three steps and then I go to the U-turn. Uh, if she has difficulty with that, maybe I give her the treat halfway through the U-turn. So again, always back up a half step. Um, let me see, if she stops cooperating, she gets distracted. You know, you can try to muscle through it, but a lot of times we end up getting frustrated. So if you find that she's getting distracted or whatever, look at your watch, you probably pushed and went for a little bit too far. Um, and it's better to have shorter, more successful, more frequent and successful practice sessions than short, fewer, excuse me, longer practice sessions where at the end she is losing interest because then she's not gonna wanna do the exercise the next time. So always end on a high note. Um, so uh, once you get to the point where you can walk around and you're holding the treat here for about five steps, then I want you to start going, when you're taking your five, fifth step right before you're gonna deliver, that's when you're gonna raise your shoulder, but at first just like, one, two, three, four, five, boom, boom, and then give her that treat. Don't hold it at all, it's just you're taking it away and then giving it to her. We want, we want her to understand at this stage, when I pull the treat up, that's the time you should be happiest, because that means the treat's gonna come back down. And so at first you're just going boom, boom, but after she gets to the point where she's paying attention, she's looking up as you take it away, then you take it away and take one step while you're holding it up here and then go down and say yes and give her the treat. Then eventually, you're, and do that, keep on doing one step at a time. Walk around your arm, one step up, boom. And eventually you walk around your arm and then you're taking two steps when you're holding it up here, one, two, and then give her the treat. One, and then eventually three, four, five. Keep on doing that until you can eventually walk around your yard and you, you get her, you do it in this position and then basically you hold it up here as you walk all the way around the yard and then say yes and give her the treat at the end. So that's the stage that you're now gonna be ready to start transitioning your front yard. And what I would do is I would practice in your backyard walking towards that fence without actually going out the fence. Um, so you're just practicing approaches. Because once you go through that threshold, start opening that fence, that's, oh my God, that's Pandora's, that's Disneyland out there. That's gonna make her very excited, harder for her to listen. So uh, I've had one client where they actually just had to have the gate open and they walked towards, at first they walked towards the, the gate with the gate closed and they did this until the dog was very relaxed and not pulling on a leash because it doesn't mean we're going for a walk after this or outside the yard. And eventually then they open the gate and they would practice walking towards the gate, but they stopped without going through the gate, but the gate is open. Because that opening of the gate can create a lot of that excitement. And eventually they were able to one step back and they did a U-turn. So they took one step in the yard and they turned around and they went back to the area that the dog's practicing in. And eventually they had two steps out there, three steps. Like the whole process I've been talking about this is it's step by step. We have to go at the dog's pace, not at our pace. If you get frustrated and you push for too many steps and she fails, we're just helping her practice being frustrated and you're being frustrated, it's working against us. So I'd like you to practice a three or more times a day in short practice sessions, one or two minutes each, and gradually they're gonna start getting longer and longer as you're able to start walking for more steps and all that fun stuff. But make sure that, again, you're doing this in appropriate uh, thresholds. Now, this is gonna be tiring for her. We've been working for three hours. She's asleep right now. I don't know if you see her in the shot, but uh, that's one of the benefits of training is it drains energy. Now, uh, I'm gonna talk about all these other stuff we went over. I just wanted to compartmentalize all this stuff because I didn't have the best instructions at the end of that uh, video I did before. Okay, so uh, we started off talking about marker words. I have videos on all this stuff, so message me if you're forgetting. So the marker words, um, I want you to, by the time you've seen this, you should have already done this. If you haven't, walk around your house. Yes, treat. Walk in the next room, yes, treat. And remember, if she doesn't come get it, put the treat in her mouth. And she doesn't have to sit, look at you, or do anything. All she has to do, we wanna keep practicing this exercise, about 10 to 15 treats until if you say yes, she's like happy and looking around. That's when we can stop practicing. So I'd have both of you practice around your house. You'd probably also practice in your yard a little bit. And eventually, you know, like I said, yes means, you know, she knows that she did the right thing and she's gonna get a reward and she's happy about that. At that point, you probably don't have to do it anymore. Now we also talked about the positive interrupter, which is making the kissing sound like, it's like you're sucking through a straw milkshake. See how that got her woken up? You can also say a word in a cadence of three or four times. Beep, 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 beep. Same thing, high pitched, but make sure you're saying it three or four times in a row like that. Animals respond to three or four times in a row. You just say, beep, I got her attention there because of the high pitch, but the three or four is important. 
And then you might do the same exercise. Beep, 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 beep. You give her that treat. And then take a couple steps. Beep, 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 beep. You asked earlier, how can I get her to say no? I'm not a big believer in telling dogs no. I'm not saying that we can't disagree with dogs, but any attention is validating. So if I say no every time the dog jumps up, I'm essentially rewarding the dog for doing it. The positive eruptor, the beep, 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 or the kissing sound, is to get the dog's attention. When they look at you, then you do the hand target. Then you ask her to come. You do the cookie in the corner. Or anything else, you just call her to you. So instead of saying, I'm getting attention or getting on the counter, when I'm on the counter, I hear beep, beep, beep. I look at dad or mom, and then mom and dad get, shows their hand. I'm like, oh, I know that. If I go touch my nose to your hand, I'm gonna get a treat. The dog voluntarily gives up what she was doing and comes over to us. Now, if we don't give her replacement behavior, a bully stick, take her for a walk, plug a tug of war, doggy stair master, whatever it is, she's probably gonna go right back to doing it again. So make sure that you're doing that, uh, that you're giving her something else better, more desirable to do. And also take note, when she does that, she's saying I'm bored. That's probably an indicator that she needs some exercise. So that's when you would take her to the, the stairs, do the doggy stair master, get one of those tree puzzles, put, load it up with some, uh, some snacks and let her nudge that around the house. Do a little bit of training. Now, if the training is too much, then you might teach her to fetch. Now, for fetch, um, I'll go through this as well. So uh, I have the ball, I, and I'd like to bounce the ball. The bouncing movement gets dogs' attention. And she's a rare exception, but it should still work for her. So it kind of bounce it. So it bounce, bounce, bounce into your grasp. The instant she grabs her to bounce, say yes, and she looks at you, show her that you have a hand. The lower you go, the more the treat is for the dog. So notice I'm holding my hand up. I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding it here. So I, th I say, throw the ball, she goes and gets it, I say yes, she looks at me, and I lower my hand literally to the floor if I have to. Most dogs will come to you when they see your hand lowering, because they know that I'm gonna get a treat. If not, you can give her the hand target, whatever you're gonna get her to come to you. But we want her to get her to come to you with the ball. When she comes to you with the ball, take another treat out, touch her nose, don't tell her to drop, do not try to take it out of her mouth. Just hold it here. As soon as she drops it, say yes and put the treat in her mouth. Then you step on the ball, pick it up. I usually tell the dog to sit, as soon as she sits, then I usually say fetch as I throw it, and I, again, throw it so it bounces. For training, it's easier to do it. Eventually, you can throw it longer, but when you're training, bounces are better. So sit, she sits, fetch. Bounce, 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 bounce. She gets it, yes. She looks at me, I lower my hand, and now we're training her to fetch. I'm making it very easy. If you have problems with this, let me know, and I'm happy to kind of consult with you over the phone or a video. Um, but being able to come and play fetch before you go for a walk or before you do these training exercises, great. Just make sure, again, she has that 10 minutes to recover before the actual walk starts or the, um, the training starts. Um, okay, we also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Um, petting with a purpose is if she comes up to you and nudges you or paws at you, nudges you, barks at you, she's saying, give me your attention. She, I would rather have her say, please, can I have your attention? The way to teach dogs manners is when they come up and do those sort of things, you give them a do-over. Same way we do with little kids. They say there's something inappropriate. I want, I want cake. Would you like to ask for that again? Can I please have some cake? A lot of times we try to give it to them. We give them that do-over. They do it right. They get what they want. So in this case, the dog comes up to you. I want your attention. Sit. I'm only going to say it one time. If I say sit and the dog does not sit within two seconds, I'm just going to lean back, watch TV. Um, the dog's jumping up and right, just stand up across my arms, across my chest, read a little bit, talk with your lovely lady, um, do some art, you know, compose a song, whatever it is you're doing. So you're saying, hey, I asked you to do something. If you don't wanna do it, that's totally fine, I don't care. But I'm on to the next thing. And then you can kind of do what you wanna do. Who's missing out on this equation? She is. Eventually what will happen, she'll start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for the attention when she does. Make sure you say your marker word and pet her. Otherwise she's gonna to go to back to nudging you or uh, chewing on it, grabbing the pillows or all the other stuff that is her way of getting attention. So eventually she comes, starts to sit down and when she does, yes, we pet her under the chin. Remember, petting dog, best is pet here, 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 here. Try to avoid reaching over her head. Um, and um, uh, I usually use the watchword of manners because that's what we're doing. So if I'm sitting here and like, so my partner comes in and sees I'm petting my dog, she might say manners. That, what she's saying is, David, I think you might've forgotten to ask your dog to do something for it because it's standing while you're petting it. Is it wrong to pet your dog for standing? No. But in her case, she really lacks motivation probably more than any other dog I've worked with. And I've worked with over 4,000 dogs. She loves treats, but she's kind of a, what I want to do it sort of dog. This will help with that tremendously. So if she, if somebody comes up and, and, uh, and I'm petting her and she's standing, they say, David Manners, I would stop petting her, tell her to sit, even if I did before and told her to sit, and I did it right, I would still take, it's another opportunity to practice. So I say sit. If she sits in that two second window, I reach down and pet her. I can tell my partner, actually I asked her to sit, you missed it. But thanks for reminding me, I do forget to pet without a purpose. 
Now, what if I tell her to sit and she doesn't sit? Like I said, playing hard to get or ignoring her or what I like to call playing hard to get works wonderful for dog training as well as for dating. So if I tell you to do something, sit or lay down and you don't do it, that's okay. There's no punishment, but you don't get the privilege of my attention. Eventually, she'll start doing that sitting to prepay for the attention. So whether the watchword is manners or paycheck, whatever you want to say, but come up with a word. And if you say, if your partner says that to you, you just stop petting the dog, tell the dog to sit or to lay down. If they do, say yes, and then pet them, and then you can explain to your partner later, I did it right, you missed it. Don't argue first because you miss out an opportunity to reward the dog. Now, the other sec uh, thing I was doing was something I call celebrating. A lot of dog trainers refer to this as capturing. The more that a dog gets attention for something, the more they're likely to do it. Most of us condition and train our dogs to do the wrong or the undesirable things. They jump up, we say no. They nudge us, we pet them. They chew the furniture, we say stop. So all the things the dog does that we don't like immediately consistently gets our attention. But if they come to us, we take that for granted. They look at us, we take that for granted. They sit, they lay down. We don't do any of these things. We just kind of take those things for granted. Well, the dog's like, well, clearly you don't really like it when I sit because you don't consistently offer attention. But every time I jump on the counters, you do give me your attention. So that's something you really like or a great way to get your attention. I would rather your dog get your attention by sitting, laying down, looking at you, coming to you, going to the dog bed and so on. So uh, I call this celebrating and usually I point at people and say celebrate. And that means your dog just did something and you are missing an opportunity to reward it for desired behavior. It's gonna take you about two months to get in the habit of both petting with a purpose. So when you wanna pet her, petting with a purpose if you would like to pet her or she's demanding or asking for attention, you're gonna tell her to sit or lay down she has one, two seconds to do it. If she does it, then you say your mark word and pet her. If she doesn't do it, you do anything, whatever you want to do. Celebrating or capturing is if the dog comes to you and you didn't ask, you still say yes and pet her. This is before she gets a chance to nudge you or paw you. So looking at you, yes and pet. Sit, yes and pet. Go to the dog bed, yes and give a treat or pet. So remember the mark word always needs to be followed by a reinforcer, either a treat, a pet or affection or attention or something along those lines. Uh, petting with a purpose and passive or celebrating are probably the e two things that I go over with my clients that most of my that my clients that do the that get the best results adopt and the clients who say I don't really care about that I want to work on the loose leash walking you, they don't have the good foundation so make sure that you're you're rewarding desired behaviors by celebrating them and when you're interacting with your dog you're asking the dog to sit or lay down or do something hand target before they get that attention that motivates the dog to want to continue offering those things. We also talked about creative forms of exercise, which is really important in this uh, house because the guardians uh, have some uh, mobility issues. And because of that, her pulling on a leash is a dangerous thing and makes walking more challenging. So uh, playing fetch is a great way to burn energy. Sniff walks and this training exercise that we're doing out here is a great way to burn energy. Find it, going to the grass, showing you have a treat and throwing it. Remember getting uh, uh, string cheese and slicing it down so they look like little nickels. Those little medallions of cheese are easy to see for the dog's eyes with contrast on the grass. That might help for this. And so playing find it. If she's being rambunctious, chasing the cats, come out here and do some find it. At first you're throwing it just a foot, then two feet, then three feet. Eventually you're throwing it really further. Um, that's what uh, cooking in the corner is one of those games that we went over. That's one where I said, find it. If I throw a treat, she runs and gets it. I say yes when she gets it. And then when she looks at me, I say, come. She comes back to me, I say, yes, and then give her the treat. And the next time I throw two treats and say, find it, yes, yes, come. Next time I throw three treats, find it, yes, 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 come. Work your way up to about five, six, seven treats. And then eventually you can do it on the grass. And you can also use this on a walk. So if you're on walks, like I talked about in the video above, and there's a truck or the other dog, you say, find it. She's practiced at doing that because you did it here. And she knows what this game is. She's happy to, she's practiced at it. It's a established habit. And then she likes doing it because she gets treats. So that's a nice way to distract her, but also using the nose drains a lot of energy. Something I'd like you to do is you can Google scent games. I can send you some exercises as well. But if a dog's using its nose to find treats, it's very draining of energy. If a dog is sniffing on walks, it's also very draining of energy. Not only draining of energy, it's calming, it's relaxing, and it's confidence inducing. The more data the dog requires, just like us, the more confident and better about us that we feel. So sniffing is akin to them reading or doing research. Try to avoid pulling them or calling them away when they are sniffing, because you're gonna find that you're not gonna have great results. Your dog's gonna practice ignoring you. Um, let me see, uh, other forms of exercise that we could do. Uh, I, uh, for physical exercise, I mentioned getting a doggy backpack, getting some weights in it, doing the doggy stairmaster, go on the top of the stairs, sure you have a treat, throw at the bottom of the stairs. When she runs in and gets it, say yes, sure you have another treat, she runs to the top. I'd like you to calibrate all these exercises. 
Maybe you need 12 fetches before you go for a walk. Before a house guest comes over, maybe you need 23 fetches. Or maybe seven up downs on the stairs versus 18 up downs on the stairs. The stairs should be your last resort. That one is a repetitive activity. It can cause some damage if it's done too much. So that's fine to do, but if you have guests that come, hey, we're gonna be over your house in 10 minutes. Shoot, I don't have time to exercise this dog. Go spend three minutes up, on, up and down the stairs. Then she has that seven, 10 minutes recovered. Then your guests come in, she's tired. When your guests come in, I would give them treats and have them hold the treats in their hands low to help with that jumping behavior. So instead of actually doing that, she's probably gonna be nudging their hand. Then you can show them how to do the hand targeting. So now when people come in, we do a little hand targeting. We can also teach her to circles, go to the dog bed. There's other things we can do. That wasn't a huge priority for you. I know jumping is an issue. So try to have your treats in your hand low so that she doesn't have to jump because the treats are at nose level to begin with. Um, let me see. Uh, so those are all forms of physical exercise. The last one I forgot to go over is tug of war. Playing tug of war is a great way to burn energy as well. And I have a video on tug toy play if you like, if she gets, takes, uh, gets too carried away. If you know any other friends that have dogs that she gets along with, setting up a play date with other dogs is an awesome way to burn energy as well. It's also rewarding because they get to socialize. Um, there's also mental stimulation. I had you order a snuffle mat. I ordered you order a lick mat. Scent games, the cookie in the corner is an example of a scent game. Uh, you can eventually hide treats around. She's got to use her nose to find it. Again, very draining of energy. Training, also draining of energy. So if you're doing this exercise out here three times a day, if you're doing the hand targeting inside three times a day and there's two of you, that's 12 practice sessions. If each one of them is like two minutes each, that's gonna have a profound impact on her mental well-being as well as her energy level. Uh, remember feeding on that snuffle mat will drain energy as well. Uh, it's better than the slow feeder because it drains energy as well as slowing down the feeding process. Um, I also talked to you about pre-max. Pre-max are asking the dog to do something before it gets something that it wants. So like when going outside, she goes to the door, she scratches the door, come over to her and tell her to sit once. If she sits, then open the door. If you say sit, she doesn't sit within two seconds, sit down at your dinner, dinner table. Read a magazine for a minute. Wait one minute, then go back to the door and then tell her to sit again. If she doesn't sit this time, I sit down for two minutes. Next time I sit down for four minutes, then eight minutes, 16 minutes. I keep double the length of time. But every time I, after the length of the time, I go back to the door and I tell her to sit. And if, as soon as she does that, the door flies open. Eventually she will sit at the door to say, can I please go outside? And you do this going in the door and out the door. You can also do this asking her to sit and wait for permission to eat her food. If she gets very excited for food, I have another self-control exercise called the bucket game, which teaches her to sit quietly as you lower the food bowl all the way to the ground and she waits for permission to get it. So if you wanna uh, go over that, let me know. I'm happy to share that video with you as well. I have videos on uh, the, uh, the uh, cookie in the corner, the hand targeting, and really all the stuff that we've gone over. So any of the stuff that you don't remember, message me and I'm happy to go over it with you. Um, I'm gonna check to make sure we're still filming. Sometimes my camera will get interrupted. Nope, we're still going. Okay, this is about 23 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Um, uh, let me see, uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Now, if you have questions on the stuff we've gone over, please call me or text me. If I don't hear from you, I assume everything's going great. So make sure you let me know if that is the case. Um, and dog training and dog rehabilitation is very much a numbers game. So you have to practice this every day, a couple times a day consistently. If you take a couple days off, you will really slow down your progress. So try to set a goal for each one of you to practice these exercises three times a day. If you have difficulty with the, any of the exercises outside, film it sideways like this one, not up and down, and have somebody else film it, and then send me a 20 or 30 second text with a, a video, and I'm happy to look at that, and I can critique and give you some pointers. If we need to, we can set up a follow-up session and work on additional stuff, but if she is rambunctious, she's running around with the cats, that's your indication she needs some training or some exercise or something to keep her occupied. Uh, now, if you have any other questions, please mes message me or text me. If I don't hear from you, I assume that everything's going well. So make sure you let me know because I, I don't charge for that and I want to make sure we're, uh, we're getting good results. We may need to set up a follow-up session work on that counter condition, maybe build on the loose leash walking. But let's give it a month or a month and a half. It's the holiday season. Let's get through all this fun stuff. And if you have, anytime you have questions, make sure you text me or call me. Ruby or uh, Ruby? Chelsea. Chelsea. Ruby is the dog at my Santa Monica dog. Um, Ruby or uh, Chelsea. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Come here, sweetheart. We want to show everybody how good looking you are. Isn't she a good looking girl? I think she's a red healer, like Pyrenees mix or something. She's got the red healer coat for sure. Well, this is my buddy Chelsea, and this is Chelsea's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.